Lighting is a very important aspect of filmmaking. Whether it's just for YouTube videos or more professional films, lighting will take your video quality to the next level. And that's why today we're reviewing a pretty decent budget-friendly video light kit, the GVM 80 Watt Light, also known as the GVM LS PADS Light. Let's go. So to start off, let's talk about price. The price of this entire video light kit on Amazon is gonna run you about $169.99. And if you wanna check it out, I'll have it linked in the description below. All right, so when you buy this video light, there's gonna be a few things included inside the box. It's gonna come with the video light body itself, an entire soft box setup, which includes one umbrella, eight metal rods, two sheets of diffusion, and one aluminum mount. On top of that, you'll also get a light stand, power adapter, and power cable, a small carrying bag, and a limited one-year warranty. And that's pretty much everything included in the box. Now, as far as specs go, I know with some video lights, you can change the color temperature, but this one only has one color temperature available and it's 5,600 Kelvin, which falls under that daylight Kelvin temperature. Going off of color temperature, the color accuracy of this light is actually pretty high. It has a CRI, color rendering index, of 97 out of 100. So that means that the colors that this light produces are 97% accurate. And for a video light that only costs about 170 bucks, I think that's pretty good. And then to keep this light from overheating, the cooling system that it uses is a fan, which isn't really a surprise. And I'm not sure if you can hear it from here, but actually let me get up and get closer to it, see if you can hear it. So I'm about a foot away from the video light right now. Let's see if you guys can hear it. Again, I'm not sure if you guys could hear that, but I'm sitting about six feet away from it now and I can still hear it. I don't think it's a huge issue because it's not super loud, but do keep in mind if you are looking for a silent video light, this one does make a little bit of noise. But again, it's nothing outrageous. On top of that, this thing also does have a built-in dimmer. It can go from 0% all the way up to 99%. Actually, let me show you it. All right, so here's the brightest it'll go. And I don't know if that's like overexposed. I'm sure it is on my camera. And then it can go all the way down. This is just just above 0% and then there's completely off. And just so you know, I never use this light at 99%, but that's mainly a personal preference thing. And that's because the few times I have used it at 99%, I noticed that it leaves some bright spots on your subject. For instance, I have this light set up over to my left and if I did have it cranked up to that 99%, I'd probably have a bright spot on my forehead and this side of my desk would probably be overexposed. But again, it's just mainly a personal preference thing. And just so you know, I do remember reading somewhere, it actually might have been on GVM's website, that if you do turn the brightness all the way up to 99%, then the CRI, Color Rendering Index, also goes up to probably closer to that 97%. So the brighter you have this light, the more accurate the colors are gonna be. All right, moving on, I'm gonna rattle through these last few specs. The beam angle on this light is 120 degrees. The front mount on it is a Bowens S mount. Its power consumption is obviously 80 watts. It does also have an LCD display. Mine actually doesn't though, because I'm pretty sure it's an older model. And the material that this light is made out of is both plastic and and aluminum. Now for the pros and cons, starting with the pros. Number one, light accuracy. Like I said earlier, the light accuracy of this thing is just crazy, especially considering the price. Getting a video light that's 97% accurate and only costs about 170 bucks is just awesome. And in my opinion, you can't really ask for much more. I mean, truly, think about it. 97%, that's only 3% away from 100. All right, Pro 2, it's simple to use. Now don't get me wrong, when I first got this light, it was pretty tough to set up the umbrella, but once you got that all set up, it's pretty self-explanatory. All you gotta do is set it up on the light stand, plug it into the wall, and then twist the dial to turn it on. The toughest part of operating this thing is probably setting it to the brightness that you prefer, but even that's pretty easy. Pro number three, you get two layers of diffusion. This is a big deal to me because I think that second layer of diffusion softens the light just that much more, giving your subjects a more flattering look, in my opinion. But yeah, pretty sweet. And that gets us to number four, the brightness output. Let me show you it again real quick. This time with me in the scene. If you can't tell, this thing is pretty bright. I'm not saying this look is desired by most people, but if you do need to turn this light up this bright, you have the option to do so. All right, I'm gonna turn it back down now. That is not flattering or good looking at all. But just for example, if you're ever in a super dark location and you need a lot of light, then this light is most likely gonna provide you with that. Now the final pro, number five, 
the light stand height. I'm about 5'9", 5'10", ish, and this video light is a few inches taller than me. And that's super helpful for me because if I ever need to use this thing for any photos or videos of me standing, then I want this thing to be at least a little bit higher than me shooting down on an angle. Because if you didn't know, that's how you get that Rembrandt lighting. You know, that little triangle of light that you get on your cheek on the dark side of your face when you're using a video light, or just any light in general, off to the other side above you. That's Rembrandt lighting. So because I can get that look with this video light while standing, that makes it just a little bit more desirable. Now onto the cons. Number one, and don't take this the wrong way, the fan is a little loud. I know I said earlier this isn't a huge concern and it really isn't, but because it does produce a little bit of noise with the fan, I think it still belongs in the cons column. I just don't want you guys calling me out in the comments saying, hey, you said it wasn't a big deal, but it's still in the cons column. Take it easy. Because to some people, it could still be a big deal. So just relax. Con number two, the power cord slash adapter dangles. Jacob, what do you mean by this? Let me show you real quick. All right, here is my light setup and there's the power adapter, right? So it's dangling off the ground a little bit. Here, let me show you a little bit better. Yeah, that's I can't do anything about that as it's at a specific height that I want it at, and that just kind of hangs out right there. So that's a little annoying. And if you're wondering if it's caused any issues with the connection from the cord to the video light, I haven't noticed anything yet. And I've had it for a little over two years now, so I'd say it's holding up pretty good. It is a tripping hazard though, so make sure that people are aware of what's going on and where the cord is placed so that people aren't tripping over it and getting injured. Also, if you're super concerned about this issue, I have thought of something that might work as a fix for it. I haven't tried this out, but if you can find some Velcro that you can stick to the light stand, and then stick the other piece to the power adapter, then that might be able to fix this issue. But again, that's just a theory. I don't know if it actually works. Now for con number three, the setup time takes a while. I'd say setting up the umbrella probably takes the longest, and that's because you have to manually attach the metal rods from the Bowen's S-mount to the umbrella. Whereas with other umbrellas, I think you can actually open those like you would with a normal umbrella you use for when it's raining outside. But you can't do that with this video light, which is why it might take a little bit longer to set the whole thing up. Now for the final con, number four, the light stand. I don't really care for this light stand in general, but my main issues with it are that it feels cheap, top heavy, and flimsy. Whenever I have it extended as high as I do right now, it's normally pretty easy to knock over if you bump it. So you just gotta be super careful if you set it up to a similar height. All right, that's pros and cons, but who's it recommended for? I'd say there's two types of people that would be interested in this light kit. Those being beginner YouTubers and beginner filmmakers. Because if you're a beginner in either one of those categories, you're gonna be looking for a budget-friendly light kit and this one definitely falls into that category. However, if you're a professional YouTuber or a professional filmmaker, you're probably gonna be looking at some more pricey options. Probably brands more like Aperture. So the GVM 80 watt is a simple and budget-friendly video light, great for both beginners and intermediate video creators. I love it, it's a great video light, and I use it for basically every one of my videos. I highly recommend it. All right, that's it. If you guys wanna see more videos just like this one, subscribe to the channel by clicking right here. Thanks for watching, and always remember, to capture great moments. Peace.